Russian soldiers encounter Anunnaki horde while fighting underground in Syria. After nearly four days of operating behind enemy lines, navigating through tunnels and caves in Syria, the Russian group of Spetsnaz soldiers were closing in on their target. Their mission was to search and destroy ISIS freedom fighters, who according to Kremlin intel, were hauled up in a cave deep in the Syrian mountains. They had been navigating the vast network of tunnels for hours, when as they approached their objective, Captain Vasilyevich held up his fist to halt. He points to his ears and speaks into the mic. Shoot. About 100 feet ahead, as they peered through the stalagmite-filled cavern, there appeared to be an opening. When listening carefully, you could hear the hum of a group of ISIS soldiers talking. According to their intel, the ISIS soldiers were set up in a small opening within the mountain system that had two to three tunnels leading to the high ground. Vasilyevich orders one of his group to go scout. He's gone about five minutes and comes back and relays that there's 50 to 60 soldiers with their guard down in this cavern. And you know the drill, my people, for entertainment purposes only, what I present to you may or may not be true. I just give the details and let you decide. Enjoy this one. It's the perfect opportunity. These freedom fighters aren't even expecting what's coming. Vasilyevich then orders them to move towards the cavern and they do so quietly. When they get to the opening, they ambush the ISIS freedom fighters, taking all of them out. They continued sweeping the rest of the cavern to make sure they had neutralized all the threats, and they did. Vasilyevich was just about ready to radio mission success back to the headquarters, when suddenly he hears something. It seems to be beeping and chirping sounds from the cavern adjacent to the one they were in. He gets in the ready formation and tells his men to move forward. He'd detail in his report later that it reminded him of some form of primitive Morse code. He and his crew of 15 moved forcefully to the next cavern over. This cavern was even bigger than the one they were just in. Their ceilings were 100 meters high, and they couldn't believe what they were seeing. The group of highly trained Spetsnaz warriors stood there stunned. It was a team of Anunnaki warriors that stood anywhere from 5 to 15 meters tall, and they weren't happy about the Russian soldiers' presence. You could hear the sound of what seemed like a laser being fired from a plasma weapon echo from the cavern walls. Vasilyevich looks to his left, and one of his soldiers disintegrates before his eyes to a pile of nothing. Anunnaki warriors gained the advantage in a matter of seconds. They were laying it on thick as the golden rays from their particle beams illuminated the cavern walls. Vasilyevich watched as eight of his men were reduced to nothing. And as the Russians fired upon their enemy, the captain quickly realized that their bullets had no effect on the exoskeleton of the Anunnaki. They simply bounced off. Atzadzitz! Atzadzitz! He yells as he knew they didn't stand a chance. So he and the remaining men started to flee. The Anunnaki warriors began their pursuit. They were out for blood. They continued to outflank them throughout the network of tunnels. It was as if they knew them like the back of their hand. Vasilyevich's men could feel them hot on their heels, and they had laser beams flying past their heads. One, then another, then another. Three more of his men go down. As they stumble through the underground caves, two more of his men go down. Now it's just Vasilyevich and one man remaining. When one of the Anunnaki warriors gives out a loud cry, he's coming from an adjacent cave Vasilyevich just passed. He grabs the soldier behind him and slams him against the wall, crushing him. Fear swarms over Vasilyevich's body at the sight. There's only 50 feet left. He gets a burst of adrenaline and sprints towards daylight. He can hear one of the Anunnaki giant's footsteps just feet behind him when he bursts through the opening. He stumbles and falls to his stomach, just waiting for the foot of one of the warriors to crush him. But much to his surprise, nothing happens. He gets up, turns around, and the group of Anunnaki are just standing at the cave exit, watching him. He turns and continues running with everything he has. Surprised, they're not pursuing him. He runs until he can run no more. He finds a safe spot and radio's headquarters. He explains to them that all of his men are dead. He can't tell how over the radio, but he calls for a chopper. After getting back to base, he explains to his superiors exactly what took place in those caverns. Their response was bleak, much to his surprise, as if they already knew about these Anunnaki warriors. Just a day later, they flew him back to Kremlin headquarters in Russia. There, he would tell his story to high-ranking Russian officials. They didn't hesitate, and they put a gag order on him and locked him away. But that wasn't before a political figure within Kremlin got the information, and he leaked it. According to the producer of the story, this was leaked by a trusted source within the Kremlin organization. The Kremlin is a group of fortified Russian citadels, one of them being the presidential palace. 
This is where a lot of deliberation takes place over important political issues in Russia. Flashback to 2019, when Turkish forces attacked Syrian city Raz al-Ayin. This was the result of President Trump withdrawing American troops from the Kurdish border. His exit was premature, giving the president of Turkey the green light to attack the city inhabited with 30,000 Arabs and Kurds. President Erdogan shelled and bombed the city of Ralzayin until it lay to rubble. They called it Operation Peace Spring, and the Turkish-backed Syrian army laid waste to the city. But this early attack drew some unwanted visitors, some Anunnaki allies, a horde. These creatures were scattered throughout the Syrian caves when the bombing started, and it gave them just what they needed to attack the city. They emerge out of nowhere and join the carnage, and begin taking people through their portals. They even take the corpses. Nobody really knows why, but you can assume. They abduct men and women alike, there is no discrimination, and they'll take them back through their stargates. It was at this moment that Putin was blindsided. He was preparing for a battle with these creatures, but not that soon. He and the Minister of Defense, Sergei Sogi, had planned the attack for November, not October. Putin had a team of Spetsnaz soldiers ready. They had advanced weaponry given to them by the Minister of Defense to get rid of the disadvantages they had once had before while fighting these Anunnaki horde. It was now shortly after dark and the creatures were continuing their mayhem when 250 Russian Spetsnaz soldiers descended upon the Syrian city. But this time they were prepared. The Minister of Defense had given them AK Kalashnikov rounds coated with a special substance, a top secret substance. This rendered the Anunnaki exoskeleton useless and it penetrated the skin killing them instantly as they drove past a street with bodies piled up in it due to the anunnaki horde the russians encountered the 35 creatures standing at nine feet tall they engaged the enemy using stun grenades and the special rounds with their ak's and the anunnaki horde were stunned the 35 of them are frozen solid looking around as their counterparts drop to the ground and disintegrated upon death this breed of anunnaki secretes a liquid that disintegrates their body so you can't harvest it and study it for scientific purposes. The hailstorm of bullets took out the Anunnaki crossbreed. The Spetsnaz soldiers won the battle. According to the soldier that leaked this story, this is one of many battles that the armies have had with Anunnaki warriors. So I basically stumbled over a number of stories like this where they claim certain forces from Russian to United States or American military to European military encounter Anunnaki warriors. And it's been going on for some time. Of course, this is just alleged, so take it with a grain of salt. Could be true, may not be true. But at the end of the day, I think it's noteworthy, and that's why I'm sharing these stories with you. To me, it seems like Russia tends to battle with them more than any country. Uh, there was even a battle with them where they used some sort of turret on top of a Humvee that shot out a laser that they could neutralize them with. So if this is the case, then countries have been working with technology that can take out Anunnaki or extraterrestrials alike. And from what I'm reading, it seems like they started showing up in 2019, late 2018, 2019, 2020, right before COVID. So is that a foresight to anything? Maybe, maybe not. But it's good to, to make reference of it. Either way, even if these aren't real, they're awesome stories. They would make great Hollywood flicks. Like, somebody's got to put them on. End of the day, this is what I do. I hope you all enjoyed it. Stay in love, stay in the light, be kind to others. Oh, before I go, one more quick thing. Keep an eye out, y'all, because I'm about to up my apparel game on another level. With pictures like the one you see behind me. Authentic art, and I'm going to put them on my tees. They're going to be graphic. They're going to be gnarly. Keep watch. Keep your eyes out for them, because they're coming soon. I'm going to keep it themed to my content. Again, like you see the pictures behind me, they're going to be ill, y'all. So be on the lookout for those because I will be popping them off very, very soon. I know I've been weak on my apparel game. It's time to step it up. It's about to be righteous. All right, y'all. I am out.